and welcome to today's video. Today we are going to be drawing a robin in watercolour so all you'll need is some watercolours and some paper. Let's go. So what I thought we'd do first is I will show you how to just draw a simple robin, sh robin shape. I'm going to start off by doing a little egg shape like this. Okay so that's for his body. I think you can see it. This is just my rough outline. Okay, so you can pay a bit more attention to detail. Right, and then I'm going to put a egg shape on top of that. Well, no, it's not an egg shape, it's an oval, isn't it? Okay, so you've got two circles there, and that will be his head. Okay, and then we are going to do his eye, which I'm going to put where those two join those two circles and the beak just kind of below like this and I'm going to do him sitting on a branch so I'm just going to do a little branch up like that and then <clears throat> before we do his wings I'm do where his little feet will be on the branch and then his will come down there <clears throat> and the other one will come and then you won't see most of it. Now for the wing I'm just going to sort of do a long shape rather like that. And then on his tummy, where his red chest would be, it's sort of an upside down heart shape. So I'll try and do that like that, and that will give us the area that we're going to do for his red chest. Okay, so then his tail, I'm going to do just as a little bit of a rectangle coming out there. Then you can go in and rub out the lines in between so that you've just got um, an outline. And you could also do, do some more branches. And I think, being that it's a winter robin, we're going to do some holly up here as well. Okay, so that's my rough outline. And once I've rubbed out the guidelines, I have something like this. I hope you can see that. Now, first of all, um, with watercolours, um, if you add a lot of water, it can make the paper really soggy. So they do do special watercolour paper, which is a lot thicker. So if you haven't got it, don't worry, but just remember that you don't want your paper too wet because it will go all crinkly. Now then, I'm also using um, one of these Derwent watercolour brushes with a fine end. Now you don't have to have one of these, a regular paintbrush will do, but for this video, so that I'm not continually washing my brush and um, <clears throat> mixing paints and things, it's really useful. Okay, so you can use a regular brush, which I've also got here just like that, or you can try one of the Derwent ones. Okay, and that's a number one because it's a very fine nib. Right, so let's get some colours on the go. Okay, so I would do, probably, I've got some colours in my palette here, just a mixture of different colours. Might not need the blue, I've put blue in there as well, but just um, a range of sort of oranges, browns, and some greens for the holly. So first of all, I'm gonna go in with the lighter colour and I'm going to make um, a little bit of grey, I think, because robins do tend to have um, a little bit of a white or grey chest underneath. So I'm just going to mix up some grey, and that we get with white and just a tiny bit of black. 
And the good thing about watercolours is they go quite a long way, so you don't need an awful lot of paint to do quite a big area. So I've mixed up some grey. And there are different techniques with watercolour, so <clears throat> you can either do sort of, they call, I think, wet in wet or wet on wet, where you wet your paper first and then you add um, wet paint to it and it sort of blends out. But for this one, um, and considering you might not have special watercolour paper, as I said, we're just going to do um, some normal painting if you like. So I'm just going to go in and the technique with feathers I always think <clears throat> got a really tickly throat <clears throat> is to do lots of little strokes. So you don't just colour it in, you can sort of do tiny little strokes that would represent um, different feathers and things. Now for the branch, you really don't want a wet brush, so I would perhaps take the excess off on a piece of tissue or another piece of paper if you've got it next to you. So now I think we're going to go in and get that lovely tummy of his coloured in. So I give our brush a clean and I think we're going to mix up an orange with a tiny dot of red. So now that's dry, we are going to go and finish off by doing a little bit of background. So what I'm going to do for this is I'm going to use a regular paintbrush because a thicker paintbrush is better for this piece. And then I am going to do a bit of a very thin amount, so you don't need a lot of paint on your brush for this. I'm just going to go in and do a little bit of green and I'm going to do that See how thin that is, just around the leaves and the branches. Now as much as it's dry, you still don't really want to get your colours mixing. So avoid going over the branches and the other bits. And then if it's a little bit wet, you can add in more colour like this. It's not actually drawing detailed branches or anything, but it is actually just giving it a little bit of colour. And makes it look quite nice. I'm also going to introduce another little colour in here because this is meant to be trees and branches so I'm going to over this area 
um, in contrast I'm going to do a little bit of my yellow ochre colour and I'm just going to try and blend that in to the green so again using a very tiny bit of colour on your brush you can blend those two in you see like I've done there you might not be able to see because it's very faint but the idea is to go from one colour to the next without a really obvious line Okay, so I'm done with the background there. All I'm going to do now is go back with my fine brush and <clears throat> finish off a few more little details just to touch up. So I'm going to get a little bit of white on the end of my brush and just go in for his eye. Looking not too shaky and a little bit of highlight on his beak. Like that. Few feathers. And also, I'm going to do just a little bit of um, either a very dark brown or even black where the leaves um, branches have dried, just to go underneath there, like that. Okay, and I'll turn his feet and they're curving over the branch. And I think we're about done. That's it for today, Arcadets. I hope you've enjoyed painting our winter robin. If you have, then don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe below. Um, next week, we will be doing a winter warmer picture. Um, so you will need a variety of different uh, felt tips I think in grey so maybe grey, black, light grey, dark grey if you've got them if not then you can use paints or just a pencil um, you'll also need some paper and just thought I'd say to you after the holidays I thought we might do some more project style things each week so perhaps one drawing will take a couple of weeks so maybe let me know what you think about that or whether you'd prefer to stay with doing a different project every week so if you've got any thoughts on that comment below and hopefully we'll see you next week bye